This is a short bite episode of Homeschool Together. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together Short Bite Edition. Today we're going to be doing a little short review on the an Explode the Code derivative. Um, they have a, a series of Explode the Code books called Beyond the Code. We've done a review on the Explode the Code book one and book two, I believe. Yes, we'll link that in the show notes. Um, we were using it as kind of a review curriculum after we finished our All About Reading and our teacher child of reading 100 lessons. We were kind of doing this as a review program. We really enjoyed the Explode the Code series. But we found that they had a kind of a reading focused, reading comprehension focused addendum to their regular Explode the Code series called Beyond the Code. And we got that and we've just finished it. Um, it's about 100 pages for the level one book. I think you, Ariel, cost was like 10 bucks. Yeah, it was like. Eight ninety five. Eight ninety five. These are very affordable for yeah. a reading comprehension book. Exactly. You will be going through probably multiple books a year in the regular Explode the Code. So don't think you're going to get your kindergarten reading curriculum for nine dollars. But <laughs> you know, so you probably would go through about three or four of these a year. So about thirty forty bucks. And if you add on any of these Beyond the Codes, which I would highly, you know, spoilers, we will highly recommend. Um, you know, you're adding another $10 or so per workbook. There is a subscription service for a year where you get digital copies for $30 a month and you get $30. No, $30 a year, the the whole year. 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 Um, And you can, I think that's for a single child, but once they graduate out of the system, you can then change it over to another child. Absolutely. So yeah, I think the thing for me, uh, out being an outsider, having not done this Mm -hmm. yet, um, because you did all the teaching with this, is that when I just looked at this, I looked at the drawings and I was like, those look cheesy and no. old and not very engaging for our daughter. And I was very surprised how much that did not matter. <laughs> no, actually, it's um, at that level, it's very endearing. Our child can aspire to be, being an artist for a curriculum company. Um, so, yeah, it was just kind of fun to see. The, the artwork's very playful, very, very fun. I think um, it's not as important. Um, that it's like high quality. I, I think the kids understand what, what is being drawn and you know what the images are referencing to. Very often you have to pick the word or you have to uh, look at the picture and understand what they're talking about and pick the right ending. Like if it's uh, dusk or if it's um, you know skunk, you're trying to get the prefix or the, uh, you're pr- trying to get the leading two consonants or the end two consonants, right? You have to make that selection based on the image that's drawn very clear what the images were were referencing. So it was never never too difficult there. We really liked uh, Explode the Code. We went into Beyond the Code. Beyond the Code is kind of a reading comprehension focused um, early reader book where they have embedded about nine stories and there are three storylines. I know that can be kind of difficult to understand, but they have a, a series of short stories around Zach the dog and then they have another one about six kids jogging. And then the final one is help, 911. And so each have, each one of those has multiple stories within, within them. Uh, the six kids jogging and the help 911 have two separate stories. And Zach the dog um, is the perennial winner always. He gets five <laughs> stories and it's the lead. It's what you lead off on. So basically the, the Beyond the Code is about 100 pages. It's broken up to nine sections. So if you can imagine inside your head, you're devoting about 10 pages of the book to each story. And within that, those 10 pages, it's broken up into three separate sections. The first section tends to be about four to five pages long. And in that section, you are learning vocabulary. And what it is focusing on is um, teaching some concepts to your learner, whether it is sight words that are going to be in that short story that you're going to read, um, key words that you will want to learn, um, that will also be in that story more phonetic based. So they, they do both sight words and phonetic based words in the kind of vocabulary catch up. And they do this by doing a number of activities. Some of them, they, they have rhyming activities. Some of them are uh, actual reading activities where they, then the child has to write that word. Um, that was a very popular thing. For example, um, they want to teach you the word play and play is not, you know, has the A-Y ending at the end which is kind of a uh, it's, it's a letter pairing that they have to kind of memorize. Um, and they say, well, they have to read, it is fun to play. And then they have to write play. And one of the, one of the cool things is kind of a stepping back a little bit. Um, one of the things we realized about Explode the Code 
And then also here, and that was also extended here into build you, uh, the beyond the code, is that there's a lot of handwriting. And I really like that. And I we pointed that out in our initial review that I noticed, you know, from the start to the end, my 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 oldest handwriting got noticeably better. And so they continued that here. There's a lot of handwriting. Um, there's additionally some picture to sentence recognition. So it's really nice. It's not just a word now, but they're reading a full sentence and that sentence then um, uh, corresponds to an image and they've got to connect, you know, obviously draw a line between the two. So there's little things like that. They also introduced um, some basic sentence writing. So they say, uh, for example, there's like a word list that they were trying to connect. They were doing some uh, uh, things that are the same. So for example, taps and wraps or pot and pan, those two things are, are related. They said at the bottom, hey, pick a word above and write a sentence. And so my, my learner would have to sit there and find a word and then find that word and think about a sentence that they could write. And you know, these are very short, you know, three word sentences. I am ill, but she had to know that she had to write it. She mm -hmm. had to spell it correctly. And so that was really cool. So she was actually starting to think in terms of writing as opposed to reading. Um, they kind of blended those concepts all uh, together. I thought it was really, really cool. Um, with respect to speed on those first four to five pages, we would do three a day. So it would take us about two days to get through those first five pages. And then on that third day, it led right up into Zack the Dog or whatever the short story is. And these are very short, short stories. We're talking three pages long, roughly about 40, pa 40 words a page. So if you can think about it, it's like the length of an early reader. Um, if you're doing an all about reading, the people who are doing all about reading, think of it as one of the stories within the, you know, whatever the books you are. If you're in the level one, it's the blue books. If you're in level two, it's the green books. That is the length we're, we're talking about here, maybe 20 sentences in the whole story. And then those classic, beautiful impressionist artworks are littered throughout the uh, the reading. So the, the reader will have something to reference to um, that references the word, the, 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 the sentences and the words that they're reading will be referenced in the image above. So it's really nice if they're trying to remember those concepts. Once that short story is done, the section is not done. Um, what they do is they have a section on reading comprehension. So immediately there are about a, you know, six or seven questions that are asked about the story. And, I, and so if I were to, if I were you and you're doing this, you have those first four or five pages that lead up to the short story. Then you have the short story. I would always include the follow-up reading comprehension page as part of the day you read the story. And why is that important? Because a lot of times if you wait till the following day, they might forget a little bit about what they read. I mean, you know, obviously these are early readers. We're not asking them to remember what they read multiple days later. You know, a lot of times reading it in the moment and having to ask a question afterwards is hard enough for them. So definitely make sure you take a take the opportunity to include the reading comprehension page, which tends to follow the story in that day. And then there are a couple additional pages that kind of, I, I think they feed back into the concepts that you are learning about in that section, but they are not related to the story. Sometimes there are pictures that they have to do, some artwork that does correspond to the story where they're, you know, here's the dog, here's Zach's face. Draw Zach's face very sad because he is dirty and sick and he's not feeling well. You know, draw that and then you can color it in. It's kind of a nice little art page. They tend to have one of those in every single section. And then they have an additional section that I really liked. It was called Think About It. It has nothing to do with any of the, of the um, concepts or the short story, but it it is about seven or eight questions, sentences that you can read. I found them to be easy enough that my learner could actually read the sentence. And then she had to write a sentence or a word answer, a single word answer, like name one thing that you can hug. And my mommy and my, and my learner sat there and she's, she has no? so many words, so many words to think about. And she comes up with pillow. And so sometimes you have to help them spell those words and things <laughs> like that. You know, like name a thing that has four legs. That's not a dog a cat. And she wrote cat. Um, that was pretty easy, simple. And then they have kind of a, a rhyming page um, to finish out and kind of round out the section. And then they start a whole new section that will be titled um, for the next story. And in this case, what I just walked through was Zack the Dog part one. And now I'm on the Zack the Dog part two. 
I think at the end of Zack the Dog Part 4, it was kind of getting into Fast and the Furious territory where you're wondering like how many Zack the Dog stories are there. Um, what is cool is on the second level, on the second Zack the Dog, they started in incorporating um, contractions. So you're, you're starting to use he is and he's, and then they would include those contractions in the story. So it's very important to learn about that. They also incorporated some additional sight words. They did have a cool thing where you were looking at words and the words were similar. For example, hill, till, and still. And you had to circle all the letters that those words had in common. So starting to think about uh, sound and letter pairings that are common across words to help recognize words quicker. And again, those words would be in the story. So they do a lot of thoughtful activities that feed into the story you're going to read and then ultimately the reading comprehension and so on and so forth. The stories got progressively more challenging mm -hmm. all the way to the end, but I felt like my learner who had already done all about reading one, teach your child to read in 100 lessons, the first two books of Explode the Code, there was never a challenge here with respect to the reading, the sounding out of words. Sometimes with the sight words, we had to remember what those were, but from the standpoint of that, she had done all those things as a review. This was something that I thought she it was very, not easy for her to do, but it was very much in her wheelhouse, and she is a type of learner that needs to have confidence. And this was a, a period of time that we were spending to build confidence in her reading skills. And I felt this book did really, really good job at that. We were doing Explode the Code level two alongside with the Beyond the Code. And I found we while we would do four to five pages in the Explode the Code in a single sitting, we could only do and manage about two, two to three pages in the Beyond the Code. So it went, it went noticeably slower. So we actually finished Beyond the Code two and then it took us an additional few weeks, maybe a month or so, to finish the beyond the uh, finish the beyond the code when we had already finished explode the code too. Um, from the standpoint of early readers, I liked it. Um, you know, for ten bucks, you can get ten short stories that have a lot of um, carryover, especially all the Zach to Dog stories. They kind of feed into each other, but they can also be read as standalone, so you, you don't have to know what happened prior. Um, there were a couple of, when you got the jogging story and the 911 story, those you kind of needed to know what happened before because they kind of led into it. But with the Zach the Dog, they were a little bit more standalone. That, I really liked it. The reading comprehension was great. The short stories. We started doing the method, the, the teacher reading the story, and then the learner and the teacher reading it together. And then ultimately, the learner reading the story alone. And I found that to help us with our kind of reading short stories and building our confidence, um, getting experience with words without the fear of reading those words. I found it really helped her reading style and any time her reading capabilities. And every time she ran into a word she didn't know, she fell right back onto her phonics and she sounded it out. It was really, really cool to see her really reading the stories. Another trick I like to do is that when I finished the actual whole section, you know, those first five pages, then the short story, the reading comprehension, and then a couple of roundup pages. At the end of that, I would go back to the short story and have her read it one more time. Reading those stories twice was really good, but that second time she read it, I didn't do the teacher reading first, student plus teacher, and then, then the student. I just had her read it, and it was amazing how many words she remembered, how easy it was for her to read, and I saw the confidence kind of, you know, mushrooming you know throughout the book so i could not recommend this high highly enough if you are in the explode the code curriculum and if this is something you are you're going to be doing definitely include the beyond the code as part of your learning um also if you're doing any type of phonics based curriculum you know obviously teach your child to read in 100 lessons gives you a ton of readers there i liked the readers in here because they they had a fun story they're always fun and kind of humorous um, and she really, you know, identified well with those. So that is kind of the light review of the Beyond the Code. You can pick it up for 10 bucks. Yep. And I definitely have noticed, you know, from not the person in the yeah. trenches, that she, her reading has really grown through this yeah. program. I was yes. very impressed and surprised, um, you know, just considering yeah. it is a, a $10 workbook and has yeah. some kind of kitty drawings and things. I, I didn't... I think we will. Continue. I didn't expect what yeah. what we got out of it. I'm really pleasantly surprised. I think we'll be continuing to use explode the code and beyond the code as kind of re review mechanisms. I think if you've been following along, we do that with 
our Right Start Math and Math Mammoth. We kind of pair them together as the primary curriculum and then a review curriculum. Um, I'm going to be probably doing the same thing here with the Explode the Code because I just like it. It's fun. It's loose. It's easy. It does give my reader a little bit of a break when we finish the All About Reading curriculum, which we are now starting. We are starting level two. We started it today, lesson one, with the ant ant eater eating all the words, and we were doing all the activities. So today was starting the All About Reading uh, level two, and so hopefully in the next, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have a nice little review on that. But definitely with Explode the Code. Beyond the Code uh, workbooks will definitely be within our repertoire of uh, materials that we like to, you know, review. It's a great thing to toss into a morning basket. Um, anytime you're doing a review or a morning basket type of thing, if you want to just kind of get those juices flowing, um, if you want to double down on, on concepts that maybe your learner is struggling a little bit, I really, really highly recommend this. So Beyond the Code level one book, we, we recommend Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!